So this is just an intro that I'm adding after I just got done recording everything else. And um, as you see, it's it's a pretty long one. But this has a lot of bitterness in it, such as many of my recordings. Many of the things uh, I address uh, deserve absolute resolve, unwavering resolve. And um, I, I don't feel like I'm fringe. Look, I, it's not a feeling thing. I'm not fringe. I'm not excessive. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't care what you've heard from me. I would call it mild. What's beyond what I've done and said? Well, hey, you you have you just you, you let your imagination run wild, but um, I I would say it's on a little bit of a low end as to what it could be, okay? Because um, I mean, look at this stuff right here. You see what I mean? And for someone to have the attitude that I'm fringe or this is too much or negative or whatever, I know that you're exposed to this stuff one way or another. It's inescapable. Like, I don't care if you're at school, work, whatever. Um, like, you, you, you are exposed to this. And um, if you're not, well, count your blessings, and I don't see why you would jump to a conclusion that I'm being negative if you don't even know what I'm talking about. But it's impossible for you to be sheltered from what has happened the past, well, I'll be a little gentle and say, since so like 2020 with the riots and stuff and all that, it's absolutely impossible. Like in 2020, during those riots and all that, every single advertisement was Worship Black Lives Matter. You have white privilege. You have white fragility if you're wary of it or something like that. You know, wary of this uh, critical race theory, dogma, and all this. All this stuff, and still to this day, and even before then, the people just are robots and don't remember anything but like an everlasting present. It's been going on for a long time on a daily basis. But here's the difference between me and maybe you that would act like I'm being too negative. It just so happens that I actually uh, can remember like just the day before compared to you or something, apparently. Or like it, it's 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 more than daily. I mean, it's it's nonstop, you know, the smugness, the attitudes. I mean, it's there, there's so many variables of it and also condensed very tightly in, in a uniform hive mind as I've illustrated quite well. So, um, I'll just let this play out. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to, to start it off like this though, because you that have maybe hesitated to, let's say, you know, approach me, whatever, in any capacity, um, for this reason. Okay. Um, that's good because if you have that kind of mentality, I'm just going to tell you like this. I don't want nothing to do with you because where was that? Where, where, where was the guards up with any of these people that support said things? I just addressed the, uh, people on so-called left side of things. I shouldn't say so-called, but it wasn't always like that. And ironically, there's that cat that you'll hear me talk about later. <laughs> like I said, this is the intro that I'm adding after the fact. So I, I don't know if you, I don't know if that even picked up, but there's that cat. Don't know whose it is. It always does this every day or every night that I'm present around it. Um, but anyway, uh, it's making me lose my track of thought here. <laughs> uh, Lighten the mood a little bit. Well, I, I, I've, I mean, I, I've said it quite well. You know, I've said it over and over again, but just for a newcomer, I just, I have to say it real hard. It's like, if you have an issue with me having a resolve against something that really threatens you to, to 
like no extent. I mean, to, to, to no end, no matter what your race is or anything. This is I'm hard on people that support Black Lives Matter and, uh, you know, black criminality and antisocial behavior and stuff. And you have me black, too. That doesn't mean that just because they're using you to create havoc and stuff and hoping that you jump on the bandwagon, that doesn't mean you have to. Uh, I, but see, I don't like to speak. I don't like to try to think for other people like that either. So let me just stop there because I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> you support this stuff. I don't care about you. You have people on your friends list and people in real life that you affiliate with that support Black Lives Matter terrorist group. Um, that, you know, just talking about that they'll scoff at, and I like I've made a post about this, they'll scoff at conspiracy, so-called conspiracy theories of Freemason. You got a Freemasonic Lodge anywhere you go, and you're talking about that's a conspiracy theory and stuff still. That's just the tip of the iceberg. But you believe in white supremacy, even your your poor next door neighbor, or something like that, or even your own family members are white supremacist stuff. They have no positions of power whatsoever. You believe that, yeah, but you would question me and size me up as a negative person. To hell with you. And you have people in your circles, in one capacity or another, that you play deaf and numb to. But are you so brainwashed that you see that as non-offensive and non-problematic to support literal terrorism? The hypocrisy that has no bounds and an ideology that if you're white, especially once you dead and your kids just completely raped and enslaved forever. Okay. And on top of saying that, <laughs> that, that you know, supporting the child mutilation and stuff for the sake of uh, religious progressivism, to hell with you. Okay. That's how it's going to be. And that's how anybody with any kind of fucking common sense should be about this, but that don't exist anymore. It just doesn't. And I know there does exist. And look, that you could say maybe is a little negative. I know there exists a certain percent of people with some sense. But, I mean, it just, I'm not going to sit here and ramble. Because this is just supposed to be an intro. And I made it already eight minutes long here. So, here it is. Actually, I have one more thing to add before the main event. Towards the end of the video, if you make it there, I address how I've talked about the metal community and, and some of the bands and stuff. And I, I talk in a more um, softer way about it. And I mean that with all the sincerity that it comes with, okay? But I'm not all the way loving, truthfully, if... I do not come hard about it. Now, this, this shouldn't really need to be said. I don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence, especially, you know, a lot of these guys in the bands, I suspect, are pretty smart. That's why it dumbfounds me that they would turn into, like, these woke zombies and stuff under any circumstance. Like, it's all counterproductive. It's weird that you'd want to turn into, a like, a sissy for, you know what I mean? You'll hear me talk like that later. Don't, don't worry if you want to hear me talk like that. <laughs> I'll spare you for right now. But it's true. It's like, what, what are you, what are you getting out of this? It's weird. I don't understand it. I really don't. But um, here's the hard part that I left out. And there's a cat killing my cat. I guess. <clears throat> so, um, hmm. The implications are right there. You have a legacy of pulling your fan base into Satanism. 
you ought to know by now, Satan never had your best interest. Okay? Now, it may come off comical and sort of sinister the way I put it, but I mean it in a very serious way, too, that um, uh, apparently his throne is Sodom and all portals to cuckoldry to Canaan because that's just what we see right now. Okay? It's like if the Barbary slave trade sex slave women were just, they willingly turned on their own men and just went with the Canaanites, the Moors and stuff. And smugly celebrated their own extinction and stuff. It's way beyond Sodom and Gomorrah and all that you see what it is. And this is a satanic agenda. I, I challenge you to prove me wrong. It's all there in your face. You guys in this, uh, other than like Nurgle that I mentioned, and maybe some other bands that are a little more popular, most of you guys don't make much money, do you? Like, you ain't getting much out of this, but you were gifted with some skills, right? And you utilize that in a way that inspired many people, but you pulled them in like a Pied Piper with some of the lyrics, myself included. And you have to consider, even if you bent over backwards right now and apologized and repented and said, guys, I made a mistake. Because hell is real, and you're going to go to hell if you don't repent, too, for what I've duped you into. <clears throat> Even if you did that right now, your fellow bandmates that have died, your, I mean, just anyone that's died under that banner, under that, uh, you know, that Pied Piper spell is in hell right now. Unless, you know, if there's exemptions for certain things, that's not for me to say. But that's just the law, isn't it? And the law should be as is, even if it does come off sometimes harsh. Because I experienced a, little pur a literal purgatory experience. If you listen to some of my videos and stuff, I don't care if anyone believes it. I really did. I spent hundreds, thousands of years of purgatory. I don't care what anybody believes. I really did experience that. So, um... I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. I'm not saying like the Catholic sense of purgatory in all its context, but it was a, you know, a limited, limbonic, hellish period that I experienced in another realm outside of my body. And um, I just know these things exist. Uh, exist. <clears throat> and I believe um, anyone's testimony, as long as they're not grifting, of course, and lying, if this is their actual experience, I don't care how weird it sounds, they experience something, I believe them. Okay. So, I mean, that's just what I have to say, though. Like, you do consider that. That's all I have to say, you know. Now, here we go. So this Facebook page is going to come to a pause, if not a complete halt. Because, like I said in my last post, it's beyond a dead horse. And I don't mean to brag about my poetic side, but... They really did come to me very fast, like within a minute, to create an analogy that is just the apex of beating a dead horse, which would be like God resetting a necropolis. If you understand what that means, you know how sinister and sorrowful that is to think about. Okay. Um, what can I say? You know, adversity and pressure can breed a lot of... Of creativity but I have not much of a canvas to paint this art upon because ah, all cultures dead it's running on fumes there's still a lot of creativity and stuff I point out um, musically and in other areas but ultimately like the society and like the uh, the community around it and, and stuff the structure is not there anymore it's dead um, it's, it's completely been uh, sucked dry by the vampirism of and the cloning mechanisms of Marxism that I despise so um, yeah I mean I can't help but be disappointed in a lot of things it's, it's pretty hard and you can't make parody of it because people are so stupid they don't understand that level of parody um, and on top of that, like there, it's such like a post 
parody of themselves anyway. It's it's beyond clown world. It's really sickening. Um, and this isn't like a pessimistic point of view on anything. This is a realist perspective. Okay. Because before things shifted into what it is now, I used to be, uh, like, in, like in 2010, before I, I saw things just shift into a robotic fashion. Um, you call me a hippie. I don't know what you want to call me. I just, I just kind of smoked a lot, and I thought good things all the time. My life wasn't really that great, and I saw my peers starting to fall a little bit, and I got, you know, I was backstabbed a lot and stuff um, around that time, but I still had a, a huge optimistic perspective, and uh, I saw a lot of hope I felt for people, but um, quickly that changed, and um, nobody talks about that, and I've talked about it, <laughs> you know, a few times, I, you know, I don't, I don't like to repeat things too much but repetition is key when trying to <sighs> wake up the dead i guess but um like i say i'm taking a big pause if not a complete hiatus uh, permanent because um you know i you can talk to me or add me if you want to or whatever but i just uh, i don't have much to post anymore because you know at the, towards the end there I wasn't drinking out of depression or anything. Like I really wanted to celebrate the remake of Resident Evil Four, and uh, what a celebration it was! It was it's fantastic game, and um, I have no regrets. But I, I I don't really regret some of the posts and messages I did, <laughs> drunk messages. Um, not not your typical type of drunk messages to girls and stuff. You, you might think it's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm very passionate. My passion, my passion has no bounds. And um, I hadn't drank in like six months at that point, and so my tolerance was, you know, back to uh, you know just weakling status. Tolerance is nothing to brag about. I'd love to just take a sip and be done with it. And <laughs> well. I kind of went a little heavy on it, and the first this was the first time I ever had a experience with alcohol where I was out of character. Um, because you know, before I got possessed, I said I was drinking and smoking a lot. Sure, that may have been one of the gateways, one of the keys, but um, that the the effects of actual possession did not take place until after I was very sober. So it's it's nothing like. I turn into a demon when I drink or something, but they don't call it spirits for no reason. And, um, I did throw a black pearl out there, you know, drinking is a little bit of a key, I suppose. And, you know, this spiritual stuff going on is no joke. <laughs> I don't care what a naysayer retard is saying. I don't care if the whole world is saying something opposite to me. It doesn't matter. It don't matter to me. I don't need anyone's approval on anything of what I've shared and what I've talked about doesn't matter to me never will okay like that's a flawed herd mentality okay let me not go off let me not go off into a rant with that I'm starting to get a little upset thinking about things I don't want to go there but um yeah it just this in this case I was very out of character I made a private post that you know people on my friends list could see saying that I wouldn't do it again <laughs> and I felt embarrassed and uh, whatnot and, but I did do it again because I couldn't believe it <laughs> I just couldn't believe it because um, I never had that kind of experience where it, it wasn't just a lack of self-awareness like I was pretty aware it just was like I mean I would say it was me but <sighs> A lot of that is, is not something I would do or how I would talk in ways, particularly in the messages, the post. I don't know what to say. Um, I mean, I, I did a lot of stuff that I deleted, um, whether it was kind of grim or on the dark humor side or uh, all the way up to I made a uh, little homage post to a deceased ex um, for whatever fucking reason. I don't know. Um, but that's what I did. You know, I just, I swelled up in a weird passion 
and um, I felt it was inappropriate. So there's a little, I, I, won't, I won't call regret, but, eh, you know, it's not something I want to leave up on a permanent page like that for everybody to see, you know what I mean? So that's all I have to say about that. Um, yep, three out of the four times I drank, it just was weird. <laughs> And, um, that's all I can say. I don't think it's going to happen all the time, every time, but, eh, you know, I need to stay focused anyway, so don't follow me on that one. That's all I can say is, it's better to stay sober and stuff anyway, but I'm not here to preach to you what to do because I'm liable to drink again and stuff myself. So anyway, um, <clears throat> What else did I want to say? I do have one more video I'm going to make, but it only came to me this morning. Big epiphanies and stuff I had this morning. Didn't anticipate it. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say complete halt because I never know what's going to happen in some cases. But um, this is this is drawing near certain like final kind of conclusions, deep oversight with what I uh, tapped into this morning. Um, and I might never post it, but it, it's at least uh, something I have to document for myself. It, it's something that um, it's, it's kind of Mandela effect related that had been, I, I just got, I kept putting it off as to really trying to put it together for a few years now. Well, actually probably about five years. I can't exactly remember when I first started thinking about this. But, uh, man, it's it's pretty weird, but it's so personal. I'm not sure anybody relate, would relate to it, but I know there's some people out there that would be interested in hearing it, but that's all I can say. Um, what else? Yeah, speaking of which, um, <laughs> I, I, just, I just have to throw this out here when speaking about the Mandela effect. How could these Christians not to say that I'm not one but it's hard to associate myself with anybody else that calls himself Christian because of how compart compartmentalize is a euphemism I'll use uh, up to completely deranged okay um, <laughs> but let me not go off into a deep tangent I just want to throw out one just this one thing here one one heavy haymaker and that's, <laughs> isn't it strange that, you know, the Mandela effect changed the Lord's Prayer? I mean, any part of the Bible should stick out to a Christian, right? And one and or three things occurred in the, in the, in, in the midst of allegedly none of them noticing it. I don't believe that. And it might be more than three things. Bear with me. It's, this is hard to articulate because it's so just, it's mind boggling to have had, again, I don't care to repeat stuff like this. It needs to be drilled. To have had reality changed where you know you're in a simulation, basically. We're not talking like the Matrix, but this is like, the veil of Maya. Okay. However you want to look at it. And you're telling me you call yourself a Christian and you call yourself a sentient being and you go to your religious, you go to your church and people, I don't want to say people I know cause I don't want to draw, I don't want to get too personal. I, I might as well, I guess, in ways. I'm sure people, every one of the people that I went to church with back when I was a kid, whenever that shit changed, and I shouldn't call it shit, but this is just aggravating me. Whenever the Lord's prayer changed, that it would be said every single opening of church. Every single, every single day. I mean, every single Sunday. And these people don't notice it. 
Yeah, I, and that's what I'm saying. I guarantee even the people that I know, and I remember, and if that preacher is still the same preacher, I'm sure he's still alive. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting really upset now thinking about this. I mean, he's like, unbelievable. <laughs> wow. That can change and, and nobody cares. So, you know, I don't like to promote fear and paranoia, but I don't blame anybody for being paranoid because what you have are people so dead that they couldn't notice that or care. That's that's beyond robot. I mean, it's weird. Or you're dealing with and now look. If I know you and you're listening to this by any measure, and this somehow applies to you, I'm not saying I think you're a demon or something, but look, I don't blame certain people for, for, for being wary of this. I listen to many Mandela effect testimonies and stuff. I've seen people be scared. I've been scared myself in certain ways. But look, whatever is going on with a lot of people, just surrender. Not to them, but to the fact that what are you going to do about it? Where are you going to run? Like like then the Body Snatchers remake. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? What are you going to do? All right. Better surrender to God. Because if that's the implications that that many people have been hijacked or something, yeah. And nothing you can do about it. You're outnumbered. And that's just one of the things going on, right? If that's the case, and I know it's the case with some people. I, I have, I, look, I know demons are real. I know possession is real. And I know some kind of incursion has been taking place. And on top of that, I talked to, we'll just call an insider. And I'm not talking like a Q person or something. I'm like, no, I genuinely, look, I don't care what anybody thinks. I know what I did. I know who I talked to. And don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about it. Okay. You know, don't care. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I could keep going with examples on what that could be, and I think it's a little bit of everything. But it has to be uh, more of uh, a veiled, or a, I, I have to lean towards it being they're under a strong delusion, or they just they're just gonna go along with anything. Like I say, the Bible says, eat your neighbor, and I, I could get grim about it. But, you know, if it started to say stuff like that, they'd do it, probably. They'd probably do it. You know what I mean? Said so the wolf shall eat the lamb, they'd probably go along with that. You know, they're going along with the drag queen stuff. I mean, why wouldn't they go along with that? You know, all preachers would be drag queen and whatever pretty soon. And horse and Pachamama or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to happen. I mean, it is happening. Every state. Anyway, uh, but that's that's the thing. People are either under a strong delusion immensely because there would be more variables of people like myself saying, what the hell is this? It's so weird. I know one notices this because a normal human being is not just going to keep going with the flow. Um, I don't believe people are that strong and resilient to keep it to themselves. Somebody would say something and you just don't see it really. Other than the Mandela Effect community, which I don't observe much anymore. Um, because it's sickening to see that <laughs> that turned into a grift fest. It, it's, it's, it's abs I mean, it was a grift fest with, uh, you know, certain bigger channels and stuff from the get go. And that killed me to think that something like this could happen. <laughs> and it's just a slow kill process or. And when I say slow kill, I don't mean like it's actually going to kill you. It may, in this case. I don't know the, the fullness of the trajectory of where this is going. Okay. I know that venom that people took is going to kill them at the best, if not put them in hell. I know that. See, it's like <laughs> you'll protest for... You know, you'll, you'll protest and go shoot up Christian schools for 
children not being able to be mutilated by weirdo doctors and weirdo psychiatrists and stuff prescribing them uh, weird drugs <clears throat> for gender reassignment but you won't go out there and do nothing for reality changing biotech inside your body because you got duped and in, duped into trusting the science and all this stuff nah you ain't gonna do nothing about that at all <clears throat> there's that dead horse again and let us pray he doesn't reset the necropolis okay so um <laughs> see this when he beat the dead horse like that, this it beats back, and it gets it gets pretty tiresome. That's why I'm, I don't want to post anything anymore, because I don't even remember what I was saying like a minute ago. Because I'm just I get mind boggled just thinking about this. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You weren't protest for GMOs. I mean, people used to a little bit. You know, you had the Occupy protests and stuff like that. You weren't all the way there, but you were close. You're getting really close to hitting the target, and then it just all went to kill white people and you know everything's white supremacy. Even just your old poor neighbor next door. Even you, of course, have something to do with that. So go have sex with them and you know be a be be reparations for slavery for them as a sex slave and so I mean it's absolutely ridiculous and I'm tired of being here <laughs> but <clears throat> it's built like this and uh, I'm not mm, I'm just gonna say it so you know like a friend was talking to me about a person he considers his, his, his enemy opposition and uh, you know I, that's look you got a problem with somebody think about think about this <clears throat> are they fully venomed up don't worry about it they're done because that type of individual is still acting like that to their fellow man still backstabbing <laughs> still acting like a little kid and stuff you think they're going to repent for taking that if you know what I'm talking about that's, they're dead they're for sure dead but they might not go to hell if they repent but uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say <clears throat> if you heard what I said you heard what I said but um, that's my advice is to not not lose your cool over things like this uh, because it's, it's real small and these people are dead and it's just a matter of time but uh, you I don't I don't uh, advocate people not feeling hateful because I, I feel hate I feel hate like probably nobody else in this world and that's not something to brag about but I don't have it continuously it's just when I start to think about it it's it's so bad and to think that I gave people a fucking opportunity to prevent this and they scoffed at it with the, with the stuff with the cult leader and everything that if you look at my page you'll see look at my old twitter that I linked you'll see what I mean that could have been prevented perhaps but since it wasn't and now that I see that people would actually worship blacks and stuff for no reason and they love masochism they love giving themselves to the most dishonorable, vile creatures imaginable. And that's not all black. Some part black, aren't they? Yes, right. <laughs> but you go out of your way to find the lowest of the low. And you know what I'm talking about. You absolutely know what I'm talking about. And you same people that say, well, you don't mean all blacks. I know I'm repeating myself. Don't care. I know it's futile punching it out with the, the old dead horse, but I'm just going to say it again. You people, I'm going to say a little harder this time. You are disingenuous. You know me or anybody that talks about them doesn't mean all of them, but I don't give a fuck anymore what you think. I never did really. But I'm going to double down 
and say, you know what? I know about you. Whenever you say that, you you must have a sexual fetish, dude, to be that. Like, what? Why are you so obsessed with defending them? Whenever they ever done anything for you, what have they ever done for their own civil? They have they have no civilization, no nothing. They should be thankful, whether they were slaves to whoever they were. I mean, slaves to whoever, uh, to whoever here. These people should be thankful that they live in a civilization like this, but they, they're not. Because do you not understand, fundamentally, the old, harsh truth that slavery goes on to this day over there. And whether it was Jewish or white or Arabic people that picked them up from the slave owners over there, bottom line is they would still be... In slavery to this day over there. <clears throat> Not with nothing. Imagine if there's no colonization intervention. There'd be nothing. They'd be dead already. But you want to give your whole body and life to them. On top of that. After everything. That they do to themselves even. So you're one of these people. I hope that you understand who I am. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. I had, I had to take two steps back after that. Because it's not that I can't cash. <laughs> look, it's not that I can't back up what I could say. Uh, I'm just the type that doesn't like to run my mouth. But look. Words are spells. One, you know, not not everything that cult leader said was wrong. He liked to emphasize a lot of wordplay, and I think it's it's called green language. Words are spells, and I'm not just a one trick pony with uh, what I've shown. So. Just consider that if you've made it this far. Okay, on a lighter note. <clears throat> I didn't mean to make this so intense, but there it is again. That's why I don't want to interface. Just imagining interfacing with an individual like that is disgusting. Because... In essence, I know you're a weird sexual deviant. Look, what, what else are you doing that for? Why why in the world would you be interested in defending people like that? Because you want to fuck them. I, I can't figure anything else out. Again, I, and everything always leads towards some kind of sexual depravity. And man, the stuff I've seen and heard, I know, I know that's what's going on. I just know it. So let's not beat around the bush. Just come out. No, you would have you'd have a whole mutiny against your fellow man just to have that nigger dick okay so just let, let's be honest guys all right let's just be honest about it <clears throat> i mean this is shit i have to see every fucking day i can't but like i say it don't really get to me until i have to address it before i was christian though whew, yeah it got to me constantly Years I felt killed inside because I just knew it was never going in. <laughs> I couldn't see the whole trajectory because in 2017 when I made that Twitter, you I don't think you would ever see me criticize anybody other than that cult. I'm a Christian sometimes, but I, I wasn't really going after Christians like that. It just was like, I, I just didn't see people. I did not see like the George Floyds. I, I did not see everybody bound on Black Lives, Black Lives Matter like that. The whole Western civilization just completely bent over and spread wide open everything. Compl I, I mean, dude. 
this this is fucked up. I mean, I, I, to think this is still got that we're way past Sodom and Gomorrah. I meant to I meant to end this on a lighter note, but I can't even remember what I was going to say, and I just don't want to. Fuck it, I just don't even want to. Now the next recording isn't going to be like this, really. I've already made half of it. I'm probably going to redo it, but it's it's not going to. I'm, I'm sticking straight to the business, and this is business. That's that's why I say like these guys. I'm not going to name names. I probably should at this point, but I mean these these other channels. They're so, you know, veteran channels and stuff. I mean, like, they've done good work. They do good. You know, some of these guys do good work on a daily basis, right? But they'll never talk about <laughs> the societal issues on the on these really deep fundamental levels. It's like, it just completely escapes them. Like, what does a fucking antichrist matter when you guys are fucking dead and depraved and going to hell for all the other shit anyway? What does a venom taking it? That's, isn't that kind of merciful? I'm not. <laughs> I went there. But it ain't going to be completely merciful because that biotech is straight, taking you straight to somewhere worse than hell. I guarantee it from what I can tell. So, <clears throat> yeah. I'm just waiting for the dolphins to come out and say, you know, so long. Thanks for all the fish because I don't deserve this. And if you're listening and you don't deserve this, you know, I don't want this for you. You got duped into taking one of those venom jabs like that look i don't i don't want that for you you know I'm, I'm trying to tell you to repent for it because just just to be safe even if you were duped into it or something you know i'm sure lord will forgive it forgives anything right but this process must be the wheat separating from the tares i'm not suggesting that i'm solomon in this picture by the way for people that uh, understood that that's solomon in this picture it's a painting of uh, a scenario that you can just look up for yourself and that's all i'm going to say um when you look i guess i'll say a little more because people might think it's pretty sinister if you don't understand the symbolism behind it whether that literally happened or not what he did there um, as a judge um i'm not going to explain it to you okay it's it's symbolic and i don't care how you take it because again these same people that have knee-jerk reactions to um what is what is offensive guys like what what on earth is offensive when you are every single day everywhere you'd have to be so estranged from civilization it's not even funny to not have it just completely funneled down your throat force-fed the anti-white rhetoric the marxist rhetoric the lgbtq so it doesn't stop and then on top of that, you you men, you let your women. I mean, God damn, I keep going. And you, and those of you with children that don't give a fuck about anything, well, I tell you, harvest is coming, <laughs> and I'm glad it is. I'm really glad it is, because I can't. It's at my expense because I have shown that I would put my money where my mouth is. I have shown my intentions, and I don't need to express that anywhere on a video more than I already have, because that's all it takes. That's my whole message. You make that expression, that prayer, that you have the disdain in your spirit against all these evil things, he will reward you. He has rewarded me. It might not be like you think. It might not come as quick as you like it. It might. It just depends. He knows what's best for you. But. I, I can't sit here and talk to too much common sense stuff anymore because I'm not Matt Walsh. And I don't have anything against Matt Walsh on uh, on a surface fundamental level. I mean, you ask me, I'd say he's an agent. Of course, I mean, it just, that stuff never ends. But what is an agent exactly in that sense? Because uh, I don't I don't like to throw celebrities or any of these people in that realm under the bus on anything. Um, unless they really got out of their way to be sinister. Because 
whether it's like with Balenciaga or I'm not like defending Kanye West with what I'm about to say. I don't I don't have anything to say about him. It's whatever, but um whatever these people might be affiliated with. You, do you understand? I mean, of course you, you people coming in late to this don't know nothing about it. But most of these people in that level, um any any in any celebrity realm basically have went through very few <laughs> MK Ultra. I mean, look, that the MK Ultra stuff people know about mostly. That's like old Tommy stuff. Can you imagine what they can do now with hypnotism and mind control? What they've been able to do for a long time now, and the stuff they did in the '60s was pretty advanced. So, I'm not saying Matt Walsh is an MK Ultra victim or he's got some type of oath, but I'm sure he does have some type of oath. But um. That's this is that's just how it is, but on top of that, you don't have to be bloodline or some kind of celebrity to be in league with the diabolic or anything like that either. It don't matter. I've I've tried to really illustrate that if you haven't noticed, and if the evidence I've shown doesn't speak for itself, I don't know what else to say. I'm not going to say anything else. So, um, yeah, that's the thing is, oh, I got ahead of myself with the Matt Walsh Association. Um, yeah, I'm not him, but it, look, he, he said it himself before I ever came to, I had to pause for a second, but he, you know, Matt said it himself. He said, if people just regained their natural function of having common sense, he would be out of business like that because this stuff is basic. <laughs> he can be a little witty and have, you know, he can be a little bit of a wordsmith. He'd be a little entertaining, but at the end of the day, we, we've had decades of intellectual comedy, dystopic movies of warning you, all kinds of things. A whole Bible worth of information warning you. But. <laughs> People remember things that weren't even fucking said in it, like a like the the, the Genesis Lucifer story. Hey, it, it's it's pretty futile, and I I wanted to end it on a light note. My mom ended up really hard, actually. I never question God. But I will just ask this question. I know that's kind of like a, that might sound kind of stupid, but you know, questioning somebody usually has a bad connotation, you know. My question would be this. <clears throat> so, all nations deceived, pretty much, what is it, like 70% of people took the mark. I don't care if it's the mark of the beast or not at this point. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, Okay, so if this puts you in like a fire too, see, look, I, I don't see, I, I don't mean to sound condescending. It's just when I observe the human response to it, I get, I do get condescending because it's like, what's the point? Like they're dead anyway. Well, like, what's isn't that kind of theatrical? I'm not, I'm not asking not to do anything more. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying, it's like, people are fucked. Yeah, I mean, they're fucked pretty good. Um, just a matter of time, he, and, you know, he lets the demonic element get a little stronger and that stuff, and it's done. You're under, that best, a spectral tyranny if you're not, like, well, I, nah, that's, that's harder for me to wrap my head around a little bit right now, but, yeah. It's not looking good for most people. So, like, I welcome uh, any of these events, but of course, I don't want to uh, immerse myself in the celebration of carnage because that kind of thinking gets you in trouble. Like, when you're justified and defend yourself, that's one thing. But it's not good for me no matter what I'm experiencing, really, to um, wish death and stuff. I, I just want it to be over. 
really by any means. But I'm not pressing the button. I didn't do this to anybody. People did it to themselves. That's the thing. Most people did this to themselves. And I just don't see... <clears throat> and in, in saying that in full spectrum, what does it matter to people like myself that really love God, really love ourselves and stuff, and, and want to just get out of this place or something? What does it matter to us that are likely to be exempt? I don't like to say that I'm going to be because that's not, I don't like to be pompous on what's going to happen with me, but we're, we're likely to be exempt. We're obviously here for a reason, though. That's that's another key thing. It's not good to wish death and stuff on people, no matter how bad it is, because you're here for a reason. I don't, I'm not trying to go into pass off stuff, but it's like this is an exile realm. Like, this is your chance to get to a better place. This, this is your time for atonement. And just so happens your blood is very uh, important when it comes to that. And if you change your blood, mm, you better start repenting. Okay. That's what it is. I'm resuming this after a few hours. And if you hear a weird noise, it's this cat outside. I don't know whose it is. It's been acting weird every night like this. I'm trying to get to my cats or whatever it's doing every day every night for past um i don't know how many months it's been but it's, it's been a long time <laughs> anyway i wanted to add a few things before i wrap this up and uh, the first thing is i was going to make a video about a particular band that um i admittedly still listen to and I'm in a certain phase right now. I don't want to call it a phase. Last year was a phase because that was me at a very, very weak point. My mind was practically mush. I had to push myself 110% to get what I wanted out there. And I think I did pretty good. But anyway... In saying that, there's a lot of things I express about myself that weren't false. Um, like you notice me in a very healthy state, I'm, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm, I'm intense when it comes to this, mat, this, this, this material, but um, what can I say? It's like, how else are you supposed to handle this? type of situation okay like this is a long time of uh, many things I've been through and it's it's hard to uh, associate myself with something for someone to understand so the only thing I can do is just tell you the story about myself in saying that um <clears throat> There's some things that were not truly representative of how I feel about, and then this this might feel like a, a a plot twist, not really. What I mean is, I mean nobody probably picks up on these things, but it it does. I, I do, of course. I know what I've I've said and done, and. Uh, I am not at odds with misanthropic kind of music, okay? And I don't have hate for humanity at its core, but the funny thing is, is where in the past, as I, as I grew older, um, I never got into 
this weird idea, this mind, this mentality of, it's like the, the old Facebook normie memes that have, that, that was the initiation point that sucked everybody's brains out of keep calm. And you know what I mean? You mad bro. And all this, like there were memes before that, but they were not for you guys. And that's why you never used them because you couldn't understand them. You could not compute and they definitely put the software user in your brain and you keep calm while this shit keeps getting worse and yes the, the docile and the apathy was just absolutely disgusting and you know i talked about i think at some point maybe it was a post i can't remember um re-uploading uh my old music videos which are excellent and that that's not a bragging thing i just in thinking about them I, I really enjoy watching them and to, it's very a very humble thing to say is that it's just compilation horror horror movies um horror music videos like uh inspired by uh i can't believe i forgot the band's name for a second necrophagia the glorious Phil and Selmo era. Um, I can never remember the DVD's name because I, I didn't know it was actually from a DVD at first. You know, I just saw the stuff on YouTube, like Blood Freak. I don't recommend anybody with a fan of heart watch that. But you know, I don't care. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying about like. I take back what I said about oh I don't like horror movies and all. Yeah, I'd fucking do. Like, all these movies have substance and messages. And um, unless it's a propaganda piece, like they make more recently, they're all pretty good to me. So I had to pause. But the only films and TV series that I've seen that are bad, fundamentally, like in a, in a moral sense or on the occult side it's it's just it's propaganda it's it's trying to um it's just trying to distort you in in some way um and it's usually racially it, there's usually a racial component i mean actually always <laughs> like the airy show i'm not saying it took me by surprise but i did not really anticipate it'd be that bad the ending of it like it, it gives you a feeling like it might be a little wholesome in its delivery no nah, it always it had to do it and i should have figured because um i mean i guess the netherlands is just as fucked up as america or worse from what i've seen with the woke stuff and everything it's just pretty pitiful and then the dark show um I don't know. I can't. I don't think it had anything really woke in it, of course. But you know, like I was saying, I mean, I just the plot of it, and this is a spoiler, okay? If you've never watched it, um, it's kind of worth a watch a little bit, but it's not going to enlighten you in a way like it, it's a disclosure, okay? It is some kind of disclosure because, you know, you look at Finiston Porus's channel, he does an excellent job at showing how they always want to have their um, fingerprints all over the evidence of what they've done. And that dark show with the symbolism of the anim Analemma, so-called infinity symbol and stuff like that, no, no, no. That's what that's really implying. So that it is enlightening in that sense, but like the whole plot of it, and this this is a spoiler, is it's saying that it it's alluding that you're in a fever dream of some Jewish guy's idea of. Um, mm, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for it. I, I want to say it as it is. So you're, they're in a fever dream of a Jewish scientist who is very invested into NASA and all that stuff. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> it's pretty sinister. 
And I, I said it probably a little mildly than what they're trying to tell you. Oh, I mean, definitely. I don't know how to say it exactly. It's it's a funny thing, and I don't know what they're trying to say, but they are trying to say something to you. And since we're so close to the end, um, you're going to have some pretty big disclosures and deception at the same time. That's why, you know, I've been very isolated from a lot of new stuff. Like, I mean, TV shows in particular I and mean, movies. I just felt very jaded with uh, a lot of things around 2011. So, you know, I say this over and over again. But, um, you know, I avoided social media for years. I avoided anything new, movie-wise, TV-wise, because I knew it was going to have some kind of weird shit in it. And this is even before things got, like, like racial, like a racial component to it. Um, like you have now with all this woke stuff and blackwashing and weird, disgusting shit because they can't make any, they don't have any kind of, um, historical backing themselves that they know of anyway. So they have to do that because of course, I mean, I'm just saying like it is, you can't make anything original and you know, most of those ideas are not coming from them anyway. Like nine over ninety percent of them. What you got, Jordan Peele? What else you got? I mean, I don't mean take shots at. I don't. I don't really care. Anyway, um. So you know that that stuff is is bad, and no getting around it. But um, it's it's worth looking at with open eyes. But it's not something anybody should watch as a consumer. But I don't want to talk to those people, and I'm, I don't feel like um, anybody that is of that vein would even listen to me for more than five minutes, you know, whatever. They'd be spooked, or just, they're fucking, I don't know. The only type of person that would listen to me like that would be a naysaying agent uh, of some kind. Um, just, you know, like I say, I, I don't know what you guys are doing that for still. Like, you're dead too. And, <laughs> hey, I mean, everybody, there, there's so many people that are just doing weird shit like that. And I say weird over and over again. It, <sighs> find me a better word. <laughs> I don't mean to be lazy with my vocabulary, but it's bizarre. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I, I just feel like when I say weird, it has like this certain kind of, just it has a certain kind of connotation to it. So I'll, I'll keep repeating it. Anyway, let's, let's stop kind of rambling about that for a moment. Um, I don't want to push people away either. Um, I guess someone like that can still find a, a, a uh, you know, they can still have their moment of redemption, I, I guess, but I honestly don't know anymore. I mean, if, if you were to just really sit back and take it in, all the implications, I don't see how we're not past a certain point in Revelation, like I, I've said before, where people are marked for heaven or they're marked for just utter destruction. Because uh, th there's just, there's so much that's been done already, you know, and. I'm just trying to say everything that I want to say so I can just, just to just kind of say that I've, I've done it, you know, I kind of got ahead of myself from <laughs> I'm talking about over 10 minutes ago and how I didn't mean to make this that long, but, um, let's get back to that real quick. 
So this has to do with a band that I still listen to, admittedly. And I don't, like, support misanthropic music. I don't believe it's good to yearn for that in any sense. Because... You try to act like God like that. That's why he says vengeance is his. For me, I feel like I have no problem being upset with this. But there's always like this element of there's implicate there there's a possibility that I could deserve this. I mean, in, in one way or another, we all deserve hell for our sins. But he gives you that opportunity in this life to change that, right? That's what he did. No matter how much everybody takes for granted. But anyway, I understand where these people come from. Whether it's Demi Borgir or um, it's in any of these bands. I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, I said it. But what I don't understand is the blasphemy. Because when you start to truly unveil the mysteries, you pull back the curtain as far as it goes. Well, without God, when you start to pull back that curtain, you're going to end up as a dark occultist. It's inevitable. Because... You just, mm, I don't really want to talk about that, but it, because I've been there, um, I don't like to call, I don't like to call myself a, a ex dark occultist because um, most people in dark occult are driven uh, to just they think they're going to, I don't know, like whether it's a transhumanist side or maybe negatively ascending, becoming a demon or something. I don't know. Uh, but primarily it's a you get into a collaborated effort to deceive mankind because you believe you're in a prison planet basically um, not limited to that it, it gets it gets pretty scary it gets pretty bad you know you you watch old movies or you know, you hear old tales or something about how people of a, of a witch or, you know, um, some, some kind of evil wizard or something. You wonder how that came to be. That's how that comes to be. Because there's, without God, there's, there's certain things that you you're just inevitably going to come across that you will believe it is just absolute truth because well I mean there's a lot of things people could experience I don't really want to talk about my personal experiences I never have the only thing I, I will do is say that old Twitter page will give you an idea of what I tapped into. And it's not pretty. So, um, that's, that's my transition from darkness to light. And, you know, people always say that it's a Freemasonic thing. Well, yes, they, that is like a Freemasonic kind of phrase, but, um, it's also biblical. Like these Things happen, like, that's the whole thing is you're supposed to redeem yourself. If you just are not pretty pure at heart from childhood and onward, I guess. But, um... It's, uh... I'll say this. It put me in a, a state of mind that was beyond fatalistic. We're talking, I had to brace myself for hell. 
an abyss where I would have to somehow navigate. I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say these things. I probably shouldn't. Um, like the people that I could talk to about this that are, are into these things that are experiencing these things, they already, they don't need to really hear my story too much because they're very intelligent. They're probably the most intelligent people it could be. That's why I'm very ashamed of the male community uh, becoming woke like that. Oh, I didn't think that ever happened, but it did. And it's really bad. You know, I, I blame every uh, from from the top down. I blame I blame them for not doing something about it. Those of you who act in clandestine ways, of course, you, for, you you just heard what I said, right? Like, I know that you're intelligent and you can read me real well. So, you don't think I can read you real well? You, okay, of course, I'm not talking about you if you're a little confused. Just as if I featured your band or anything, you know what I'm doing. And you know that... If this, if this, if these are your lyrics and your intentions, this should be a, a good opportunity for you to have any kind of publicity, right? Stand by what you say, or just do what you want to do. I guess I don't like preaching to people like that, really, because I'll be hard on it, but I don't like. I wouldn't, because it never helped me. Like someone coming at me like that never would help i had to just want to look into it myself and it took pretty bad experiences on top of that so i i missed what i was I meant to say earlier once again um and that has to do with a video i, I about made of a, a band that uh, i feel pretty close to i mean not personally but um, just the way I listened to their music in that time of darkness that I was in. Like when those two fruitcakes, well, it was just one of them, I guess, but they, they, they work as a unit. So I, I might as well call both of them fruitcakes. Um, called me the darkness. Like that was a real deep sneak disc. I ever seen one. You think I couldn't see something like that? You're a fool. <laughs> I don't like the name call. Especially people who are trying to be my opponents. Buddy, you don't know what darkness is. You may, can some, your spirit may feel it, but what you feel is, mm, I don't know how to say that. But I don't have any intention of uh, bragging about anything. Like, I'm a badass, evil guy or something like that. That's not what I'm trying to say either. What I'm trying to say is something really hard to articulate. I'm just going to stop. Like, mm, I, I, could, I could show you darkness is all I'm saying. I, I could show you. But... It turns out God said vengeance is his and I'm going to let him have that. That wasn't a threat um, or anything. I just could show you darkness. Okay. And I'm not going to do that because you're going to see it anyway. I, most likely. You would have the audacity to have that kind of attitude at a time like this towards me. <laughs> And if you feel like I'm something dark, do you think that you will be backed up by anything of light by being condescending and fake like that? <laughs> because, look, if you think that I have a hidden agenda or that I'm something dark, then 
your best option is to really closely analyze if I wasn't willing to talk to you, of course, and you make the best judgment you can, right? But when I'm interacting with you, you have an opportunity to just get a deeper analysis if you would be willing to. And I, you know, showed you that I, I'm, I was very sincere in my approach. You weren't. And that's pretty dark, if I say so myself. That's all it is, is that you can feel the reflection. I feel that inner shadow that I don't hide from. I took it in. I processed it. I defeated it. So I just want to interject real quick in light of something that happened last night. I got done listening to an interview of uh, the founder of the band that I'm referring to that I reached out to, the, the one who continues the band to this day. And I guess I will just, you know, say who it is. Uh, the band's a throne. And uh, the reason I've held back talking about that because, I don't know, there's just uh, the, the video that I was going to make about it. I don't, I'm not saying I feel ashamed or anything. It's just to know that, okay, so these bands, you know, I must stress, like, I completely despise blasphemic lyrics, okay? That doesn't mean I'm going to go crusade on these guys or, like, you know, force a Bible down their throat or whatever. They have to make their own choice, and I love them regardless, okay? Like, that's that's not just being Christian. That's just who I am. That's who I'll always be because I have enough empathy to understand as what led me into a dark path myself and when I say dark path, I don't mean Satanism and stuff, just the embracing of the realism of the darkness of humanity in this world and nature. Okay. Like this, the, I don't like to talk about the, the deeper, um, philosophy like that because it's a pearl that I, I keep jealously to myself that I subconsciously align myself with at first being, you know, nine years old, but um, it took me a long time to really process it and like it's just it's something that I would prefer to keep to myself but I threw it out there just a tiny tiny bit um, because you know a lot of these channels and interviews and, and no offense to the interview I just got in watching that you know make metal commentary and stuff particularly the channels let me get back to what I was saying there it's just a bunch of yuppie nonsense talking about nothing it's not like back in the day um i mean there never was a channel back in the day that um that i know of there, there's probably some underground stuff that this that touches a little bit on philosophy and you know the lyrics and the and the more uh, spiritual elements uh, but just people don't even have an ear for it because they entertain like I don't know if that dude's name is a needle drop or whatever. I don't care to name names like this. It's just, I never watched that guy. Never have I watched that guy. Ever. I have never, not once. Um, I could just look at him and tell. And that's all I have to say. And, he, and I've seen, um, I'm not someone who just judges off looks. It's like, look, back then you got a verified check mark or whatever it was on YouTube. I can tell your agent. I, it's just, it's simple. <clears throat> Um, I could name other names, but people know how these journalists and these agents come out of the woodwork for the longest. They've been wanting to corrupt metal forever, whether it's the stupid metal sucks and you see it right in their name or any of this stuff. But people didn't really, you know, it, it was a gradual until it just completely, these guys just gave in. They went from talking about killing Christians, burning churches and stuff to just completely bending over to all this stuff. Look. You get it. But anyway, I'm attempting to, you know, try to make this type of, you know, real commentary about these things. And that's what I did with the uh, Metalhead Veteran video, or however I named it. Because 
it's it's just it's not fair, you know. And whether no one watches or not, um, I, I want to leave my place, and I don't want to say history, but I don't know how to say it in a humble way. I just want to make my own my own testimony about it, whether it would become historical or no one listens to it. You know, I, I know that I, I'm, I'd just be satisfied with it myself. You know what I mean? That's all that has ever mattered to me, being a loner in my whole life. So this interview, back to the what I was saying, um, what it was actually was a comment section. And the interview was just uh, you know, it's really a good wholesome atmosphere that uh, it just took me back a bit. Um, I mean, it wasn't anything, you know, I don't know. It, it it wasn't like crazy warm, and you know what I mean. It just it just was uh, good vibes. And but the comment section is, is what I really want to talk about. And if you didn't know any better, and you just looked at that comment section, and nothing else, you would think, oh, male community still straight and you know cool and chill and all that. You know, I understand it, people that may have a sheltered experience. Might not know what I'm talking about when I say metal is like pretty much dead in that sense, like the the community and the um just the, the impact on society and stuff like that. It's not there. However, you know, enthroned this band I'm talking about in particular, I mean, and, and a lot of other bands that did not get like any recognition or proper recognition, in my opinion, you know, starting to get, you know, a few more tens of thousands of views if 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 not more. <laughs> just like depressive silence that I'll mention after this, when this resumes, you know, just blew up when Dungeons Synth got real popular and stuff. And like the Dungeons Synth community is one of the most intellectual communities I've seen in comment section and stuff. I have to throw that out there too. But um, like it just it just brought me back to the old times because I mean I used to love getting on MySpace. That's the first time I ever interacted with Enthroned. Um, like I told the dude and like everybody, it just was such a, was such good vibes. You know, um, we had just, I know we had all like minds and it just, it just was good. You know, no big deal. No matter what person's philosophy was, we all got along in one way or another, but there was no narcissistic woke stuff. Even if someone was, I never knew a communist other than one person. I'm going to talk about that, I guess. Since uh, I've made my private life pretty open, I mean, my private life exactly, but you know, my name's out there, and people that went to school with me kind of watch this and stuff anymore. So, it's someone that I went to school with, and you know, I'm just saying that people might know what I'm talking about because it was a, in, there's an incident involved, and it just it is what it is. But that dude, when he's comments back in what, 2010 or whatever, he was not woke. <laughs> just put it like that. You know, people bring up uh, Euronymous being a communist. I haven't looked into that much. You're like, you think he would really be a Black Lives Matter supporter in the 90s? But see, my argument is, I don't know what that would become of that now. That's why I'm really hard on the fact that we see those same type of strong people. Which I don't know how Euronymous, how strong he was, but hell, you know, it, the, the music touches me to this day. Um regardless of how I don't like the blasphemic lyrics and stuff now. Um, and he has to be strong in some sense. You know, that's all I could say. That's that's some powerful stuff. Mayhem, all these bands, I wouldn't be the same person probably if it wasn't for them. I started out listening to Soil Work on accident when I was flipping through the Music Choice channel back in 2004. Life's been different ever since. Um, even these bands, I have to say, that you know I've been real critical on from the symbolism and the whatever that they might not even be a really aware of, or they, they think that it really would come into fruition in their lifetime, but it's going to, and it has this prophecy, um, like Demi Borgir and these guys, it's like, especially Demi, you know, I wouldn't be here in, in a lot of ways and in the same fashion that I'm in without these bands and the, and the lyrics and stuff, because I mean, let's put it like this. If I made an album with lyrics, which I never have, <clears throat> I made instrumental stuff, but if I ever made album with lyrics, which I've dabbled with lyrics, 
if you've seen some of my Facebook posts, I'm, I'm capable of making some dark stuff. <laughs> I mean, I would have probably taken some people down as well. Like I say in, uh, in my intro, like that's, that's the whole thing guys is that that's what's on the table. And if you're like as, as serious with your craft and stuff as I know you're what you are, you should have a problem with what I'm doing, you know, but just know that I'm not coming out of my way to be on opposition with you. And I'm not saying this out of fear or anything. Like I genuinely could stand my ground on whatever, but I would not go out of my way to cause conflict. This is just something of a pattern that I'm recognizing. Uh, there's some bands I find strange and that's it. Like, but those bands, of course, are not just making lyrics about philosophy that's been there since the tradition of metal, which is satanic. This is in more political weirdos and sellouts. And that's all I have to say, guys. I'll let it resume now. So I had to go to sleep after a certain point there. I just cut it off. I felt a little overwhelmed trying to think of what I was saying. But basically, these are just people who like to project and... It's quite a remarkable situation because it showed that even when interfacing with the divine and knowing that you are part of God and at the center of the universe and stuff, it's still, these people will still act condescending and they have darkness in their heart enough to try to cross me like that and stuff without, I know you haven't pro properly assessed me or anything because when it comes to darkness, buddy, you don't know nothing about the Bible. Or anything because everything has its place except for rogue elements now i'm not going to sit here and give you a lecture on that this this should be pretty evident if you think i'm rogue element where does it you, you go ahead and explain that I, I i challenge you to go through everything i've said and really show what you're talking about because you won't be able to because it's not true and you don't know what you're talking about now, as to what I think and know about you, that's another story. Because I let people define themselves. And you sure did that quite well. I had watched you behave strange before towards people. But, you know, I reserve judgment because I know those people that you were also uh, bickering about were also strange. Not all. But a lot of them were. But apparently they're not as strange as you. And you picked the fights it looks like. I didn't understand that at first. But now I see you guys go out of your way to pick fights for cloud or something. It's very weird. <laughs> There's that word again. I'm not going to apologize for it. I mean, this is... <sighs> anyway. So I'm... Um... You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't making threats or anything like that. I just uh, promise you that it's, mm, you don't know what kind of thin ice game we're in if you're still acting like that. Or you just, you can't control it. You're part of the harvest. Uh, you want me to talk, you want me to talk dark, I will. And you, nothing to do about it. You're just going to continue to act like that. You're under reprobate spell. You're done. I shouldn't even say it like that because I know it's mostly, this is something that's a part of you that you're willing to do those things and act like that. This is what it is. I will not entertain the idea that God it just puts a spell on people for no fucking reason and makes them turn into stupid people like that. No, you choose to do that. Unless you're led into captivity and I just don't believe that with you guys in particular. But um, for anybody like you or um, just anything like that. Coming at me cross like that, thinking ill of me like that. Well, I mean, intentions are known. <laughs> and one thing, one more thing I'll throw out here. Is I'm not a I'm not as alone as you think I am, and I'm not talking about a secret organization or anything like that. I'm 
You can let that marinate, okay? Just because I might not be winning the popularity contest with plebs and mind-controlled zombies and stuff doesn't mean... And look, I'm not, I don't like, I don't, I'm not someone who brags. I like to let things speak for themselves because <clears throat> this is how I am. It says I've been like this for, this is, I mean, pretty, pretty long time. Well, pretty young. But uh, anyway, a special announcement. I'm going to end this. I didn't get out everything I wanted to say in this, but it's just been a little difficult. So, um, I was talking about bands and stuff. I don't think I ever got around to talk about, you know, the video I was going to make. And uh, I don't want to make that now because I talked to the uh, not founder of the band, but the mastermind of most of the uh, work for the longest now. And um, I consider him not, uh, you can't call him a founder, but you know, he's, he's tapped into the, the original intentions and stuff of the band so deep that he, he, he really is like the, like the heart of the band. Um, not to say um, like the, uh, one of the X members isn't either or something like that. But I mean, he's just the, the last remaining member like that. And, um, I don't know what else the other guys contribute to, so no offense, but I just can tell as the lyricist, he, um, is, uh, just a very deep kind of person. And I was very confident in when I wanted to approach him and stuff. And what I want to say is, is that that's, that's a band that gets pretty dark and, um, I completely admit that I was in 100% alignment with, well, I'm not a devil, I've never been a devil worshiper myself, but just the, uh, some of the criteria, I definitely say 100% alignment with in that time of darkness myself, and it still has its place in ways. Yes, I said it. I mean, these people are extremely passionate and creative and always held a, a dear place in my heart because I could just tell that like that to me is metal and the underground like that always gave that hope to the common man that you can reach some kind of ascension because like these bands like that are larger than life to me after this woke stuff got interjected into it, I mean, it's it's very disheartening. I don't feel as grievance uh, as much as I'm like explosive about it when I talk about it. That's just how I have to deliver it. I have to relive how I originally felt about these things. But it's not something I like constantly am uh, going on a rampage about because it's, it's not worth it. Okay. But that's just what I want to say about that is, you know, when I, when he responded, especially... It didn't take him responding to create a humanizing effect because of you know what I was about to make a video about or something, and it, it's not because he responded. I didn't make the video. Um, I had made up my mind not to make it like pretty much the day after I was about to because, uh, like I told him, basically, um, there's just a futility uh, going. To a certain extent and he, he may he may have wanted me to do it for some reason I don't know I mean but like this 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 type of uh, individual which is I don't I don't mean to compartmentalize him or put him in a box with every other uh, band member like that but like there's nothing wrong with actual true community and not high-mindedness in the negative connotation but um the, the like-mindedness to where we have like almost like a, like a telepathic connection i'll give you a funny example um <laughs> if anyone may have noticed one of my videos 
Um, I uh, had, you hear the like World of Warcraft's ambience in the background. I played that quite a bit last year just to get my mind off things. Um, and then I got banned from the fucking gay, actual Russian server. And they're woke. How retarded is that? How, how could this is after this is after the war started and everything and you know how what people look at Russians it's like that's they hate their guts I don't have to say anymore whereas I have a pretty soft spot for Russians um, not like blanketedly but just like the culture and stuff you know um, I'm not really going to comment on the war or whatever right now I mean pretty much speaks for itself. I've I've already commented on that. I forgot, yeah. With Nurgle and his, his faggot ass. That's that's the only guy. Look, I just have to say that Nurgle in the underground from Behemoth is the only one that I'm like, man, you are fucked up and you you are like worse than any celebrity I've, I've ever seen. And stuff. Like that that's that's how I feel about that. Like that's a huge turncoat bastard. Just like John Longstreth, I've seen him talking to some bitch about doxing black metal bands because even the ones that don't have NSBM lyrics or like low key uh, national socialism pretty much like what the fuck back in the day someone would have killed you dude and you know that like they would have fucking killed you possibly and you have the nerve the people that supported you I had to pause for a second but uh, uh, primarily most of your fans are white, dude. They're not black. I mean, metal, metal metal fans are from everywhere, but predominantly black people don't get into it. You know what I mean? And it definitely don't come from Africa or anything like that. <laughs> I've, if I, look, I don't care where metal comes from. I appreciate good music from anywhere, but I'm not getting into this. Oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting into this whole. Oh, I'm not racist, and I would appreciate this if it came. I don't care what people will get. At. Look, it's, it's too much damage done, and I just don't give a fuck. It's 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 in your fucking face, and you don't care to talk about killing yourself and killing Whitey and and you know giving your ass to blacks and stuff just for reparations, and I don't care to say it like it really is. Like you should be fucking ashamed of yourself, dude. That's disgusting. That is so disgusting, man. Like I love Angel Corpse. I love Demok. Um, I never got into Origin. I don't know if they've always been kind of fruity like I see them for longest now. But, um, I mean, they're a tight band. I mean, the musicianship. It's like I say, I never really got into them, though. Um, but, you know, I've, I've appreciated John's work big time. You know, very inspiring to me. It it, it doesn't it, it didn't come from uh, a, like I didn't want to ever come to this. You know what I mean? It and the, to just go back to the telepathic thing um, with World of Warcraft. I'm gonna play a clip here. <clears throat> so I made a cut there because I got into some rambling I didn't want to go into, and I completely about forgot what I was saying about World of Warcraft. The whole thing I was saying about that is um, I, I'll just admit I've been playing WoW for, you know, since like 2006 and um, off and on not continuously. I always get tired of it or something bad happens. But um, anyway I never had a good experience with PvP especially Vanilla Altered Valley and stuff like that. It always has been horrible, like most of the time. Or it's been the opposite. <laughs> like one side, that's the whole thing. One side will always be cuckold, pretty much. That's and especially when they uh, had the reissue of Vanilla in 2019, had a horrible experience on Alliance. Dude talked me into playing Alliance. I didn't really care. I didn't want to. I mean, I got nothing against either side to play. I like all the races on there to play here, pretty much. Even though I haven't played some of them, I'm not getting into a rambling fest. But, um, yeah, like, Lions just got dominated. It's too bad I didn't record that stuff, but I, that's why I recorded a lot of this experience. But I, I deleted everything. What you see on my YouTube on this channel, um, my once secret gaming type channel, 
um, is all that's left because I deleted everything else on my hard drive. I didn't care. It made me so mad when they banned me over nothing. Russians banned me for something. I mean, absolutely unreal, ma'am. For wrong thing. I mean, you, you can just go look at the story on my, on this channel if you want to. But anyway, um, the telepathic thing, my friend was watching these recordings and he's like, man, I, I kind of narrated a little, you know, uh, more, more deeper to him since we talk compared to how I try to, you know, uh, illustrate in some of the earlier recordings. Um, but basically, um, I had never had such a tight group like that where I mean just just watch it you know I'm not I'm not gonna play a whole one they're, they're really long but just just if you if you want to if you're a fan of it I, I'm pretty sure you enjoy it because any if you've never seen a tight group like this we're not we weren't pre-made and they're just like maybe one two people were pre-made other than that dude I'm telling you like that it was the coolest group of people like, um, I don't know about personality wise, but in the sense that we always somehow would work together so good, we wouldn't even have to say anything. I'd never seen that before. That was like the coolest experience. I just have to say that. Um, and it's sad that I have to have some of the, <laughs> the more fonder experiences recently through a game, but it is what it is. I had one of my worst experiences on that server though. That was really shallow outside of the AV experience, horrible server. When it comes to the community, so many SJWs, so many weird degenerates talking about like every day they they be talking about anal sex and uh, stuff, and sometimes like literal, I'll just say it like pedophilia and all kinds of stuff every day. But you say something against it or outside of the political spectrum, you get banned. And that's what happened to me. It's a rated T game. You want to talk about regulating speech? Why don't you regulate things that? teens could be exposed to instead of these fucking man children they get offended by whatever uh, yeah, look this is it's such a dead horse but anyway that's how i feel with the remnant of the metal community and the strong underground because there's still a strong underground it's just like i said the the influence in the community that existed that you know you could bump into fuck a fuck ton of people like there, there wasn't i did not i did not know one lame gothic or metalhead back in the day i'd not there that just wasn't a thing man there wasn't no like posers were just canceled and the strong survived you know and that's and i see why that was a good thing now because these same people all they want is to dominate you they can't they don't know how to exist on their own so they just want to mimic and, and make you assimilate to their pitiful way of life and that's what marxism is and who it was made by a little fucking rat like that anyway so when i come hard on nurgle from behemoth or john longstreth and stuff like i did in my veteran metalhead video and stuff like that of course i was a big fan of behemoth I was a big fan of uh, John Longstreet's work and pretty much all his bands. I never got into Origin early. Not just because I see they're pretty fruity from recent years. I don't know if they always were that. When I when I first saw Origin, um, wherever, um, they, they seem, you know, kind of like pretty menacing back in the day. But now it's like, the looks pretty, look, if people want to be homosexual, that's what, yeah. Whatever, you know, but this, this is pretty gross looking. These guys, you can just tell they're really weird. This, uh, like I say, you make a song called Decolonizer in 2023, you gotta be a fucking faggot. I'm just gonna say like it is. Like, you gotta be a fucking faggot, dude. What in the hell? <laughs> you, all the blast beats for blacks and stuff. <laughs> You got to be a fucking faggot, dude. Yeah, I'd say it to your face. And I'm not just talking shit. Like, you and John in particular, and, and Nurgle probably too. I seen John with some bitch on Facebook. And I don't know if I have it documented, but I stand by what I say. She talked about doxing somebody or something like that. 
and like just black metal in general but she's like because she's saying like uh you know even if they're not outwardly nsbm that doesn't mean anything you know it's root you know all black metal's rooted in some kind of white angsty stuff you know what i mean bitch probably doesn't and they, they probably never bought an album of his or anything nothing but these are the type of people that the the veterans of metal fucking support never bought their fucking albums now have you ever seen rap i don't care if it's underground rap like three six mafia and stuff you ever seen them support white people or something like that that it got grovel to them and i, I mean god damn turn gay for them and turn into whole girls for them go ahead i'm done with you but i never i didn't want to be it's sad but i've let go and it is what it is and that's all i want to say is like you know when it comes to the band i was referring to that i talked to if you're listening to this you know who you are um i've reached out to a few others didn't respond don't care you know i did what i needed to do and i know things don't need to be responded to always you know some people are really high up and they operate in a different kind of level and i understand that okay did you hear me i understand that but um don't underestimate me just because i ain't reading everything like a matrix or gematria code and you know what i mean and just because i don't speak in code and stuff at all, at all times does mean uh i'm someone who should dismiss because <laughs> there might be something you're missing not me so <clears throat> that's all i wanted to say is like i want to give thanks to the people that brought me this far in a way because if i hadn't found metal music i don't know where i'd be today really like that changed my life like the energy and the and everything that it gave me was just so redefining in a good way and though it brought me to uh, like a dark gnosis and it it did make me depressed in ways at the same time because it made me understand that there existed something so sorrowful to create like a black art like that um and brilliance at the same time but i just i could under i could feel the sorrow in it too and then we're talking nine ten years old that's the truth so um you know that's 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 the most things i can give right there and just know people that operate on a clandestine level about things just because you're not screaming out loud white power white pride or <laughs> you know fuck niggers or whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> just because you're not doing it doesn't mean i don't see you in a way and doesn't mean i want you saying that either of course <laughs> uh okay enough fun i don't care if i get banned on youtube for saying that either i didn't say it in um not first person but i'm not, I'm not saying i'm not telling people to say that i'm just i'm just giving examples because this is the dumb fucking shit that these sjw's actually project on to people like phil and selmo just because he gave really cool white pride speeches back in the day and i think i thank the lord for that man uh, even if uh he hasn't defended himself properly like phil and selmo is one of my favorite artists of all time and even when People were giving him hell for other things back in the day for things I don't understand. It's just like the old journalists were hitting him hard. I, I, if, I, if my memory serves correctly, I could be mistaken. I could just be going off one thing that I read too. But it seems like he's always got a little bit of a bad rap, and maybe he has been bad sometimes. I don't know. But um, you know, that's 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 one of the people that I, I really I don't want to say looked up to, but I liked listening to and. Um, you know, I, I just felt a, a distant friend in him, you know, and I did. I felt that with a lot of you guys. And um, that's all I could say. You know, this stuff is if you didn't know, it's real as you as you wrote it uh, or, or drew it in the artwork uh, or or played it. So that's all. I hope uh, you make the right decision. And if it's uh, on the darker side, I hope that you can stand firm embrace yourself for what's to come thank you for listening actually i have one more thing to add and that's a special announcement i don't know if anyone's ever listened to me uh, that that's listening right now has heard me sing on my youtube but um 
I do in one video. It's only 50 seconds long or something like that. And it might not be the best you've heard. That's besides the point. Um, but I think I do pretty decent. That wasn't the best effort I could give. And I was also very um, unhealthy. So you do hear me breathe pretty heavy because I don't move my mouth away from the... Um, <laughs> I don't know if I was using my phone or... Um, yeah, I guess I was using my phone on the microphone at that point. But anyway, um, I work out pretty heavy now, so that shouldn't be a problem. And I say that to say, um, those vocals could contribute to a Dungeon Synth type album. Um, I mean, I know Dungeon Synth is traditionally instrumental and stuff, but um, I don't want to make something... Um, inside any kind of box but I've been a huge fan of Dungeon Synth since I've heard Depressive Silence and I've always liked instrumental stuff in general whether it's from movie soundtrack or whatever like old gothic kind of atmosphere but um, Depressive Silence when I heard them back in like 2011 I don't remember what channel it was it only had like hundreds to a few thousand views until recently I've seen it's blown up into uh, probably a million views by today um, and the whole Dungeon Synth scene, I didn't even know there was a big scene like that because I always want to find more material and it seemed hard or I just wasn't looking for the right, I didn't find the right blog spot back then. Um, but, um, uh, I also want to throw out Depressive Silence is like my second favorite. My first is Omglave, I think that's how you say it. And it's spelled E-M-G-L-E-V and... As much as I say it's it's one of my favorites, it's not something I've listened to a lot, but man, it's it's awesome. I listen to it about once a year. I think it's the second album. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called Nas or something like that. Um, I could be confusing that with a uh, summoning album, and I'm not sure because I'm not real big into summoning, but it's it's very good too. But um, anyway, that that's something I, I just want to recommend for anybody in the Dungeon Synth because that one I noticed. Uh, Last time I looked, didn't get didn't still didn't have a lot of views, and it's a superb group or I guess one man uh, effort, and that's all I want to say. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know if anyone's appreciated the music that I have shared that I, I kept private for um, almost uh, going on ten years now, which is my foreshadowing rights project, and they'll be under the same moniker most likely. Um, I'm going to put my best foot forward with it. Um, the only reason I never made more material outside of 2014 was because uh, I really had writer's block. Every time I tried to make something, it would be too chaotic. It's like I just could not tap into um, something that made... It just was too much instrumentation. It was too many... It's what I wanted to do, but I just couldn't do it right. It's like... You know how Ebony, if people know who Ebony Lake is, one of my favorite bands, um, just a little, you know, they, they, they can do that, but it's just a little too excessive. Anyway, that's all I want to say. Again, thanks for listening.
Thought for sure he was ready to dish the goods.